thank you God that your son is still in the saving business so that everyone that call upon the name of Jesus can be saved this morning. You cannot afford to stay where you are. You have to make another step and another step until you reach the mountaintop. I want you to know that my life has never been the same since I responded to the Holy Ghost wake up call. It's the place where everyone is equal. We're, I believe it's a level playing field at the foot of the cross. So whether you call it from the Bahamas, Jamaica, UK, Mexico, what do you call it from Ethiopia? It doesn't matter where you're calling it from. Just want to let you know we appreciate you and we're all equal, whether you're black, you're white, whether you had some any still last night, regardless of where you slept, we want you to know we appreciate your presence on this platform and God has a special blessing for you. Good morning and happy Friday. The time is 6 a.m. here in South Florida, and we welcome you to another edition of the Holy Ghost Wake Up Call. I am your sister in Christ, Carol Cowan, and it's certainly my joy to be your host this morning. Wherever in the world you're joining from, whether you're connected via our conference lines on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or via Zoom, I greet you warmly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. We're always delighted to have our first timers with us, and we want you to know you couldn't have chosen a better place to be, the place where Jesus has promised to meet with his children. On Fridays, we pray about mental illness, mental health illnesses, and generational curses. Many of us are in the prison of darkness and depression. Many of us have had terrible things happening in our families that have held us captive. But today I want you to know you are not your mother's or your father's mistake. You are not your family's failures. If you've got pain, he's the pain taker. If you feel lost, well, he is the way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's the prison shaking savior. He can Hallelujah. break every chain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Family, I want you to keep in mind the fact that God made us to have interdependent relationships. No man is an island. I need you. You need me. Let's strive each day to reflect on Christ and how he was loving and tender to his fellow men so we too may be transformed in his character. As Ty Gibson says, no man has ever seen God's face, but we have seen his heart. It's a heart that cares for the downtrodden, the outcast, the misunderstood, the lonely, the lost. Oh, that the Lord would give us wisdom and understanding in how to minister to each person, whether they be in our home, at work, or at play. Let the heart of Jesus be seen in me. How about letting the heart of Jesus be seen in you today? At this time, we'll be continuing our study in the book of John, with Pastor Gary Gordon, and he's covering chapters 19 through 21. We had a great time with him yesterday morning. We thank you so very much, Pastor, for your partnership and pray God's continued blessings on your family and ministry. I invite us to pray for Pastor Gordon as he gets ready to deliver the message this morning that God will put his word in his mouth. So we'll, we will only hear that which the Lord wants us to hear. Before we turn over to Pastor Gordon, let's listen to our song of meditation. What can wash away my sin?
What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power. Wonder work, wonder work in power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Amen. We are so, so grateful for another day, another gift that God has given us this uh, second Friday of October. And as we navigate through this uh, final uh, few days of our time together, we are glad that there is power in the blood. And I am sure that there are one or two persons online this morning, those in the chat, who are also grateful that there is power in the blood. I want to thank you, Sister Cowan, for just again giving me such a warm welcome and and just sharing in in that encouragement that we all need to keep pressing on and believing that our God is a chain breaker. Before I get into the word this morning, I want to assure all of those who are watching live online, all those who will watch later on, that we must continue to believe that he's a chain breaker. He is a way maker and there is nothing too hard for our God. Amen Amen. and amen. Now, as I said, we are continuing our journey as we uh, close up the book of uh, John. And uh, yesterday we looked at uh, a text that perhaps was not so uh, familiar to us. John uh, 19, the the second trial of Jesus, uh, it is called uh, and the we found out or we were reminded that all power belongs to God. We may be powerless in ourselves and our lives and our experience, but our God is all powerful. Now we're going to take a journey now as we move through what is this, uh, as it were, the, the, the crucifixion and the journey through to uh, the resurrection. And so we're going to take a journey through Uh, on today being Friday uh, to Christ on the cross, our Savior on the cross. And I'm going to share uh, with us uh, just a a passage of scripture, and uh, it is found in John 19, John 19 and uh, verse uh, 25 and following. And it says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. Mm. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciples, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home, took her uh, to his own home. We're going to speak for just a a few minutes, uh, the love of a savior, the love of a savior. Father, we thank you once again that you've allowed us 
the privilege, the gift of life that we may be able to wake up this morning. And as we hear your word now, we pray that your spirit would uh, fill us, fill me, Lord, and that when we have heard your word, we will know without a shadow of a doubt that you have spoken. And we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, there is a tradition on uh, death row when persons are being executed that they will ask them for uh, final words, any final words. Often that is done because there is a feeling that uh, individuals or persons may be guilty and they have not necessarily apologized or acknowledged their behavior. And so sometimes they give them an opportunity in that final moment to say something, some words of acknowledgement, maybe some uh, uh, words of uh, uh, ad admission, uh, maybe some words of regret or sympathy or uh, of such like. And then you have uh, persons who sometimes face sickness, uh, illness, uh, they, are, they are slipping away, we would say, in, the, uh, in where I come from or my parents come from, they are traveling. And, and, and people will say, you know, what did they say? What was, their, what was their final last words? Did they have any last words? Because we believe that last words, final words, uh, especially for persons who are on the brink of death, speak volume, speak significantly uh, to a person's mindset, their values, their convictions, and, uh, and their beliefs. Uh, how interesting then that scripture actually records uh, what I'm sure is familiar to us as the, well, it's called the seven last words, but it's actually the seven last sayings of our Lord Jesus as he hung on the cross, uh, recorded in Luke, in John, and in Mark. Uh, in Luke 23 and verse 34, uh, the words of Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, a lesson for us in forgiveness, because sure enough, if Jesus could uh, forgive and ask for forgiveness for those who had put him on the cross and those who were part of it, either in physically or through the the, the, the creation of stories and trumped up charges and and, uh, and kangaroo courts, then we ought to be able to forgive each other. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, and, and yet Jesus, the, the Bible says, uh, moves to, to a point where he, in these first three, seven last sayings, it, it is said that the focus of Jesus is people. He is concerned about the people, the, the crowd, the mob, those who are, are party to him being on the cross. Then he's concerned about a thief. And, and somebody said that Jesus in Luke 23 and verse 43 stopped, like, stopped dying long enough to give a thief hope. But not only a thief, but also us hope that we might know in our time and season and space that we can never go too low, we can never have been too bad, we can never have gone too far, that God will not forgive us and seek for us to be with him when he comes in his kingdom. Amen. And so we said to the thief today, uh, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. And, and then there is something else which comes now back to our text in John 19 and verse 26, when Jesus, uh, looking at his mother, seeing his mother at the foot of the cross, says, uh, woman, behold your son. And then to John, he says, John, behold your mother. Mm. Now, there is also... Uh, Mark 15 and verse 34, the anguish of our Lord, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then in John 19, 28 and John 19, 30, we have I thirst and it is finished respectively. And then closes out the seven last sayings, Luke 23, verse 46, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But as we go back just to those words of Jesus, uh, the text says when, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, 
he said to her, woman, here is your son, or behold your son, and uh, son, uh, behold your mother. Mm. Now, I think that there is something that is quite significant here, and that is that uh, Mary and the, the other women as uh, narrated in, in scripture were at the cross. They were at the cross as a group in unison, while the Bible is clear that outside of John, all of the other disciples had fled. Now, I, I must confess, I, I did take a little peek in the participants and and the chat and and I don't know somehow somewhere and I don't have uh, time to talk about it on today but we ha we have to do something to to, to level the, the the field as it relates to the faithfulness and the commitment of women uh, and as it relates to spiritual things and spiritual disciplines because we see somehow those numbers replicated at the cross are also somewhat of a reflection of what continues to exist as it relates to devotion and presence and spiritual disciplines like prayer and 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 these uh, gatherings such as these and and I would talk more about it but all we know is that the mother of Jesus and Mary Magdalene and Salome they were all at the foot of the cross now I know we're in the month of October we're considering the the issues of domestic violence and and, and uh, in the home primarily targeted against women we are also focusing on breast cancer awareness. And I just want to, just for a moment, I, we don't have a lot of time, but I just want to say thank God for godly women who are praying who are agonizing, who are yeah. speaking God, covering their families, covering Amen. their spouses, Amen. covering their Amen. children. Amen. I don't know, uh, uh, Elder Pitt, where we would be had it not been for the godly women in Amen. our Thank you, yeah. Jesus, yeah. for Thank prayerful you, Jesus. women. Thank you, Jesus, for women who cry in the midnight hour over their yeah. families, over the state of the world, over the state of the community. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we see when yeah. Christ needed it most, his mother was there, other women were there, agonizing yeah. for the Savior. Amen. Amen. But we also are encouraged yeah. to know that despite his excruciating agony and pain, Jesus was concerned about the welfare of his mother and the pain that she was experiencing. With his thoughts of Mary's future and security, Jesus entrusted her into the care of John, his beloved disciple. Now, most scholars believe that uh, Joseph, Mary's husband, was already dead at that time and and therefore, this is the reason why Jesus asked John, the beloved, uh, to, to, care, to take care of his mother. Now, interestingly, traditionally, the oldest son in a Jewish family was duty bound to provide for his mother's care if she became a widow. Now, it's understood that Mary was uh, the second wife of Joseph, and the Josephs had a wife that had died. And so they were older brothers. If you remember in the text, the text says that that, that Jesus and his brothers came to speak to him when, when there was issues with the Greeks. And so by entrusting Mary to John's care, Jesus was fulfilling his family responsibility as a devoted son. And so here it is that Jesus said, Mama, you look at me and John, look at Mary. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, here is a few lessons for us. Number one, Jesus was saying to Mary, Mary, mother, you have done all that God had entrusted you to do. You have mm. fulfilled the purpose for which you were created. You have fulfilled the role that was given to you you in preparing me to be a sacrifice and to give my life a ransom for many. And I don't know who I'm talking to online this morning, but I want us to know that God is depending and looking at us to fulfill our assignment. Each one of us, no matter our pain, each manner of us, no matter our situation and our circumstance, God has given each one of us a responsibility and assignment that we must fulfill. 
And I believe that there is nothing more important. There is no praise. There is no commendation. There is no raise. There is no affirmation more important than hearing Jesus say, well done. Amen. In that Amen. moment, Jesus was saying to Mary, yeah. well done. You have done what you were what you were called to do. And I believe today in our time and season, what we need is not more money necessarily in the bank. What we need is not a promotion. What we need is not to have our name on a plaque. What we need most of all is to hear Jesus say, well done. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Jesus was saying to Mary in that moment, uh, well done done. And I believe that God has placed within each of us a responsibility that we might hear the well done, not only in the, the, the deeds and actions, uh, uh, not only, let me say it the right way, not only when he comes in his kingdom, but in the daily deeds and actions and interactions that we have with people. You see, a yeah. whole lot of folk are looking for the well done when the clouds roll back as a scroll and when the Savior bursts the sky. But every single day that we wake up and we walk on planet Earth, it's an opportunity for us to bless somebody, to lift somebody, to encourage somebody, not only to receive a blessing, but to be a blessing. Amen. 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 But there Amen. is something else that sticks out in this text. And that is that uh, Jesus said to John, John, uh, behold uh, your mother. Clearly in this text, uh, the, the Bible says that, that, that G John was the beloved of Jesus. There was a close bond. We know Peter, James, and John. And even at the, at the Last Supper, uh, G, John leaning on the breast of Jesus asked the question, uh, according to the text, Lord, who is it? And so here it is. John is titled as the beloved disciple. He is close to Jesus in proximity to ask him about who it is that would betray him. But also John finds himself present at the foot of the cross with Mary and, of course, with Jesus. Now, I want to say to us on today that God is depending on us to be in our rightful place to fulfill our responsibility. Oh, yes, it's great that we can be online this morning, and it's great that we can have our responsibilities for those of us who are in church and do our responsibilities in church. But I would suggest to us that it is more than just being on point and being in a location for a service or a prayer line. But God wants us to be in our place where he can use us most effectively. And sometimes that place or position is a place where it may cause us sacrifice. It may cause us to pull from our resources. But I'm saying on, on today that wherever we find ourselves, we are in a position for God to use us. So Jesus says to John, John, uh, behold your mother. It also means, brothers and sisters, Christian friends, those who are listening and watching online, that John was somebody who could be trusted. Now, I know that we live in a world in which uh, so many people are scared of individuals to trust because people, are, people lie, they cheat, they rob, they deceive, they swindle, but I believe that this lesson is shared with us today that we can know that God is looking for men and women who can be trusted. Woman, yeah. behold your son. Son, behold your mother. There are two then more sayings that John points out in uh, his reference to Christ on the cross. First one we dealt with speaks to a, a savior who is concerned about the welfare of his mother. A savior who is concerned that his mother not only uh, have support, but also that his mother understands that there is a purpose, stay with me, that there is a purpose to her pain. 
And so Jesus wants to affirm and let her know, Mary, even though you're weeping now, even though you feel the pain because you see me on this cross, understand that there is a purpose to your pain. I want somebody to know online today that God is letting you know that there is a purpose in your pain. You may not fully see it now. You may not understand. And I believe when Mary looked at the disciples who had forsook and fled, when Mary looked at the uh, at the crazy confusion that surrounded the crucifixion, she may have wondered, what was this all for? What was this? What was the point of carrying this child inside of me for nine months? And for somebody online, you may be going through some pain in your life and you may be asking yourself, what is the point? You have prayed, you have fasted, you have agonized and you are wondering what is the point? Well, I believe that Christ is saying to us today, just hold on a little while longer. You will understand yes. there is a purpose in your pain. You will Amen. understand that God is working in ways that you cannot understand. You will understand the bigger picture we talked about yesterday. Because even when we are going through pain, we can know that God sees us. Amen. 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 And he sees us because he understands our pain. You see, the words of Jesus, I thirst in John 19 and verse 28, uh, remind us that Jesus was a fully, you know, some people say, oh, oh, you know, well, of course he was able to go through his suffering on the cross because he was God. Well, 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 John here in John 19, 28, the words of Jesus let us know that after six hours of hanging on the cross and excruciating plain, Jesus declared, I thirst. So let us know that he is a, a savior that is in touch with the feelings of our infirmities. The, the Bible says Amen. that he was in all points tempted like we are yet without sin. So the same savior who sat down by a well and declared to a woman uh, who had a, a, a questionable life, give me the drink. The same savior who wept when he saw the blindness of Jerusalem and the grieving over Lazarus is the same savior who declared I thirst to let us understand and know that he is a God who is moved by our humanity and the pain that we go through every day. But not only that, Amen. but it was also, uh, metaphorically speaking, a message of confirmation uh, that Jesus not only is one who, who thirsts, but one who even in that moment was fulfilling scripture. In Psalm 22 and verse 13, when Christ declared, I thirst, he was actually speaking a message of the messianic prophecy in Psalm 22, 15. My mouth is dried up like the puff shed and my stung sticks to the root of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. The apostle cited the words of Jesus to remind us that not only is Jesus uh, fully human, but also that he was fully God. You see, I need us to know on this Friday that it's yeah. good to know that our Savior understands the aches and pains and the stresses and the strains that we go through. But I'm so glad to know that he's not only fully human, but he's fully God. That Amen. means that he Amen. has all power in his hands. Amen. He has a thousand solutions to work yeah. on our problems. Why? Because he is the savior that was human, but he's also the savior yeah. that was verily God. And Amen. that should give yeah. somebody encouragement because you've got bills to pay. You've got yeah. struggles in your body. You've got challenges in your yeah. life. And you just don't need somebody to empathize and sympathize, but you need somebody, you the need fixes. someone in Hallelujah. your life who has all power in his Hallelujah. hands. Someone Amen. who was fully man, but also yeah. fully God. Yes, you fully understand God. you've yeah. got challenges in your marriage. And you may go to the therapist, but it's also good to know that the one who invented uh, marriage mm -hmm. is able to help you and deliver you. You may have yes, problems in your body. Hallelujah. You go to the doctor. It's good to know that someone understands the aches and pains and can help you in that way. But it's also mm -hmm. good to know the man who is still in the healing business. Mm -hmm. 
and you may have problems in your finances and you may look at your resources and you may think you don't have enough and i'm so glad that when the bank manager will fail and when the credit card gets denied and when you your partner money somebody knows what i'm talking about has run up on a thousand hills hallelujah for all of our needs Yes, 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 Pastor. So Jesus, in declaring it is, I thirst, was reminding us that he is fully God, but he's fully man, but he's also fully God. And as I close on today, we are encouraged to know that as Jesus put, uh, laid him his head and prepared to die, he declared it is finished. And it is finished. This was not only a statement about that moment on the cross, but it was also a statement about the plan of salvation, which was assured with his death for our sins. And so that you and I can know on today that whatever we may be facing in our experience, it is finished. It is not finished. It may not be finished in what we see and we experience in this very moment, but we can claim the promise that it is finished because Christ declared it on the cross. I don't know exactly when it was, but I know on this Friday, because of what he said on that Friday, we can declare it is finished. And so we may be feeling overwhelmed by the stresses of our life. Christ declares he's a chain breaker. It is finished. We may be concerned over the problems in our marriage and our children who are acting up, but Christ is declaring, don't worry, I will save your children. I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. You can stand on it and believe it is finished. You may be concerned that your immigration status is not yet resolved, but I believe that God is working his purpose out because this is my father's will and God has the final say. He's declaring, don't worry, you may not see it now, but it is finished Hallelujah. because we know that one day our Lord shall come Hallelujah. and shall not keep silent. Amen. And even though it may not seem much now, it may seem that political leaders hold the fut- our future in their hands. But one day Jesus is going to declare, he that is just, let him be, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he will be Declare as he cracks the sky, the same Savior who declared it is finished on Friday. One day, I don't know what day it's going to be, but I believe he is going to crack the sky and declare once again, once and for all, it It is is finished. finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we Mm. claim that today. We claim the covering of Christ over our families and our circumstances. We claim the covering of Christ in our pain and our suffering and our thirst. We claim the covering over Christ over every dead end or overwhelming situation because we know if our Savior could give us hope as he hung on the cross, what about now in 2021? Hallelujah, Jesus, to your name. We trust you, God. We believe you, God. We are certain that you hold the future in the palm of your hand because as you gave hope to a mother who was in pain, as you gave hope to a thief who had lost any hope, as you gave hope to a people who had let you down, today we receive the hope. Hallelujah. Your power remains in your hands to save us. Father, we thank you today that your words on the cross are words of assurance, not words of desperation for dying man, but mm. words that confirmed you as Savior and Lord and also give us hope in this uncertain world in which we live. And so we thank you, God, that you have you uttered those words on the cross to give us all assurance that when we mess up, you still have forgiveness available to us. When we have lost our way, you can tell us, Lord, that 
we still have a hope to be with you in your kingdom. When our families are in confusion, you are still the healer who will bring us back together. Uh, when it seems as if we are, we are dried out, uh, Lord, we can receive sustenance from you because just as you uh, had thirst, so you can quench our thirst. And we know that it is finished and there is no weapon that is formed against us that will prosper. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you for what you did on that Friday. So on this Friday in 2021, we can mm. claim your promises and walk forward into a unknown, knowing that you are there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have you seen yeah. the love of a Savior, the heart of God manifested today in the love of a Savior? I tell you, friends, he loves you. He loves me. Give him that chance in your life. Amen. Your, your future it's bright if you do that. Uh, thank you, Pastor. We thank God. We praise Amen. him in this morning. Yes. And we praise God for pouring out his anointing upon you this morning as you deliver this word. Truly, our hearts have been blessed. And I know that we will leave this place looking on the heart of God the love of a savior, the love of a savior. Praise God, praise God. We bless his holy name. At this time, we'll be opening up the lines so you may share your prayer requests and praise reports. And we have our sister Shaw who will be interceding on our behalf this morning. So if you're on any of the conference lines, uh, you may just uh, press your asterisk button twice to unmute your set to speak, and we'll acknowledge you. Of course, those of you on uh, Zoom, uh, you may uh, place your, your text in the chat window, or if you're on YouTube, you may do so as well. You also have the option to text to, to telephone number 754-234-6358, which is our 24-hour prayer line. Remember to put a prayer box if you do not want your prayer request to be read out loud. Who will be first? To Good call morning. In? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're hearing you. Uh, Yes, I'm asking for prayer for myself and my family. Mm -hmm. My name is Brother Martin. All right. And uh, for my grandmother, my, not my grandmother, my mother-in-law is in the hospital in Jamaica. Okay. Okay, we remember Brother Martin. God bless you, my brother. Is there another caller? Mm -hmm. yes. Good morning. Good morning, awesome message. Praise God. Yes, I want to give a prayer. I ask you for prayer for my acid reflux, and I have mm -hmm. seen much, much improve with my acid reflux and my sinus. Thank you all for your prayer. Just continue to pray for me and my family, and I will see you guys in my in your in my prayer. Thank you so much. God bless you, my dear sister. Amen. Yes. Always happy for the praise reports coming in. Uh, we serve an awesome God. You another caller? Good morning, guys. Um, I asked Good morning. Prayer about, uh, morning. Uh, about a day ago um, from Kenya with the operation for the fibroids. And um, she did the operation, thank God, and they took out five, um, nine little balls in her stomach. So she's recuperating now, you know? Okay. Praise God, and I know Praise you're really God. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Who will be next? Uh, in the meantime, we have... Um, go ahead, caller. Good morning. I'm requesting prayer for Steve. He need a breakthrough in his life, but 
most of all, you want to draw closer to Christ. Okay. We'll be lifting up Stephen in prayer. Okay. I want to ask us to, uh, to pray for Ariel, who is um, pregnant with twins. Uh, the challenge with Ariel is that she previously had two miscarriages. So, you know, this time of pregnancy is a, is a bit traumatic for her. So we want to remember her in, in our prayers this morning. Uh, we have another person. Uh, we have a, a little bit of interference on our lines. Um, friends, if you are not um, speaking, can you please remember to mute your set? Uh, we are recording so we can uh, play back later on for those who are unable to join us in the morning. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, there's a, a message who, that came in. Uh, someone was testifying that on April 11, they had a stroke, which was diagnosed as a migraine mimicking a stroke. And today they're asking us to pray for a mirac miraculous healing for severe mitral valve stenosis. Um, the doctors are saying that the only option is for a open heart surgery, uh, but they are trusting God. So we want to remember this uh, person in prayer. Is there another caller? Is there another caller? If not, at this time, we will be Good going to... Good morning. I just want to thank God because I requested prayer for my friend in Jamaica. Uh -huh. And the same morning, I get to speak to him. And I spoke to him. He went back to the doctor, did some more blood tests on his way. So I just continue to pray for him. And I just want to say thank God and thanks everyone for prayers. Okay. Yes, we remember that um, that, no. that, that, that phase of support, we do remember it, and we praise God uh, for using you in that way. Uh, bless the name of the Lord. And we want to remember Valdine. Someone is requesting prayer for Valdine in the Cornwall Regional Hospital with COVID. And uh, requesting prayer for a family, seven of them positive with COVID, and we want to lift up this family in prayer. If we do not have another request. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, this is Marcia. I'm a simple prayer for my family in Jamaica mm -hmm. and my dad in the US in Brooklyn here. So I'm really here. I'm a simple prayer for him too. Okay. We will be lifting up your family in, in Jamaica and your father. Here. Okay. God bless. God bless you too, my dear sister. Okay, so we put a lid on it here now as we go over to Sister Shaw, who will be leading us in prayer. And may I remind us, family, you know, while the person charged to pray not may not remember each name because of human limitations, it's important mm -hmm. that you know that your request and praise report are noted and you are being prayed for. Amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. All right. Let's pray. Most gracious and loving Lord, we thank you once again for an opportunity to come into your courts. We thank you this morning, Lord, for waking us up. We thank you that we're in our right mind. We thank you that through your Holy Spirit, we chose to come together this morning on these platforms to worship and to praise your name. This morning, Lord, we're thankful that you <clears throat> indeed are our Lord and Savior. Thankful, Lord, that you hung on that cross for us and thankful for your last words which help us to understand that there is a purpose in whatever pain we suffer, yeah. that there is a blessing that we can be to others 
no matter what we face, no matter what comes our way. Lord, that you are a chain breaker, Mm. that you are the one who has paved the way. You are the one who has made it possible. You indeed are the way maker. This morning, Lord, we remember that burdens are lifted at Calvary. Yes, and that's right. where we come today, to the foot yeah. of the cross. Yeah. To lay our burdens at your feet. Yeah. To ask you to take them up for us. <clears throat> that you would be the one to hear and to answer our prayers. Lord, today we are coming to you with prayers regarding mental illness and generational curses. Yeah. We're focusing on these today, Lord, and we're, we're laying these burdens at your feet. We're asking you, Heavenly Father, to intervene on behalf of your people. To step into the lives of those that are suffering from mental illness and those who are facing generational curses. Mm. Lord, to to, wipe away these, these things that are hindering your people, that are keeping them bound down underneath the weight of curses and mental illness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can bring these issues to you. We thank you that you are the God of healing. We thank you, Lord, that you understand and know the life that we are living, that you've already walked in our footsteps, and that as we bring our our issues to you, you understand You know what we're going through. And Lord, above all things, we recognize that you have the power. You indeed are all powerful. All that we behold is within your control. And we know that you can handle whatever it is that is burdening us. This morning, Lord, as we lift up the individuals who have put in request for prayer, As we lift them, Lord, we ask not only for the healing, not only for uh, the strength and the support, but Lord, we ask that you would strengthen each and every person's faith. It's our faith and trust in you that make us well. So strengthen their faith, encourage them, give them the strength through your Holy Spirit to cling to your name to cling to your promises because sure healing only comes from you. So this morning, Lord, I want to lift up those who have called in. I want to lift up those families. I want to ask the Lord that their faith would be strengthened as a result of the things that they're facing. If they don't have a relationship with you already, that the things that they are facing are the things that will turn them around and bring them into a relationship with you. There is no salvation without a relationship with you. And while healing here today may be nice, it may be great, it may be what we're asking for. Mm. That relationship with you that guarantees everlasting life is where we want to look forward to. So I'm asking for that connection for each and every one. This morning, Lord, I want to continue to lift up the Hazard family. Lord, they are are suffering under the weight of their husband and father who is in in, uh, ICU on a ventilator. We ask, Lord, that you would step in and you would touch him, that you would touch the entire family. Give them the strength to support him as he undergoes this Uh, this curse, and that, Lord, you would bring him through. We have a request from a brother, Markin, for himself and for his family. We lift them up, Lord, to you in a special way. He's also requesting prayer for his mother-in-law who is in the hospital. Heavenly Father, we put them in your hands and ask that you would do for them what they cannot do for themselves. We have a praise report from a sister who has been suffering from sinus problems and acid reflux. 
Lord, we thank you for what you have done in her life thus far. We pray that you would continue to bless her, continue to bless her family, strengthen them, and help them to walk the straight and narrow path. We have a report on McKenya who underwent surgery recently. Lord, the surgery was a success and we thank you and we praise your holy name for you have come through from McKenya. And we continue praying for her as she continues to recuperate, that she would again uh, be fully healed and, and able to resume her life. We have a request from Steve who is looking for a breakthrough in, <clears throat> who is looking for a breakthrough in his life and for a closer walk with Christ. We can ask no better thing, Lord, than a closer walk with you. So Lord, as Steve comes to know you more, as you continue to work on his conscience and to draw him close, we pray that he would have a breakthrough in whatever things are, are stumbling him in his life. We have a request for Ariel, who is pregnant with twins. Lord, we pray that you would take her through this time with a successful pregnancy and a successful yeah. delivery. We pray that you would give her peace of mind as she goes through this pregnancy, knowing the things that she and her family have already experienced in the past. Keep her strong, keep her faith strong, and be with her in a special way that she indeed may deliver healthy babies. Yeah. We have a praise report from Jamaica um, in regard to a friend who was suffering and was encouraged to return to his doctor. We thank you, Lord, that he indeed heeded the call, saw his doctor, and is in the process uh, of being treated and on his way back to health. We have a request for prayer for a family in Jamaica and for the dad who is in Brooklyn. Oh God, we lift them up in a special way. Whatever their needs are, whatever is uh, maybe causing problems or troubles in the family, whatever needs they may have, you know their needs. You know more about them than even they know. So we put them in your hands and ask that you would take full control and that you would do for them, guide them, lead them, and keep them in your peace. We lift up again <clears throat> the individual who was misdiagnosed, who had had a stroke and is now facing the possibility of open heart surgery. God, we know that you are in control of all things, and we put this person under your control as well. Lord, we pray that they, she would have no fear as she faces the future because she faces the future in the hands of God. Amen. We pray for <clears throat> several people who are suffering as a result of COVID. We have the family who seven of them have been uh, diagnosed as positive. And we have Valdeen who is in the hospital uh, with COVID. We lift them to you, Lord. This is such a scourge and it is affecting lives. It is affecting health. It's affecting families. It's affecting finances. Lord, we ask that you would step into these families' lives, that you would Jesus. help them to overcome these illnesses and to restore them back to health. Yeah. We pray that whatever is necessary, whether it's a change in diet, whether it's exercise, whether it's fresh air and sunshine, whether it's supplements, whatever is needed in order to shore up their immune systems and to get them healthy. We pray, oh Lord, that you would put that in their paths and that they would take it up and that they would be healed. We have a all a requesting prayer for um, their father, Mr. M. Lord, he is suffering from wounds all over his body. Mm -hmm. Lord, it puts me in mind of Job when I read a, a message like that. And just as you cared for Job, as just as you brought him back from the brink of death, 
we ask that you would intervene for Mr. M and that yeah. you would heal his wounds as well. We pray also for his daughter and granddaughter who are helping him through this crisis. Help them to deal with the situation. Help them to be a support and an encourager and help them to do whatever is necessary um, in order to help him through this situation. We have a request for Sean Campbell, Lord, that he needs a financial breakthrough, fair wages in the job that he's working on. We pray for his mental health as well and for any generational curses that are weighing heavy upon him. Remove them, Lord, give him strength, help him to overcome all of the things that are burdening him. Help him to see his way through Help him to see Christ and to lean on him to get him through. We pray for Sister <clears throat> Nayoka and her fiance, Kevon, and for their children. They too, Lord, are looking for a, a financial breakthrough. They're looking for fair wages and again, removal of generational curses. Lord, lift them up. I lift them up in a special way and ask that the way would be made open for them, that the way would be made plain, that they can see what directions they need to move in according to your Holy Spirit so that they can overcome their financial situation and whatever curses are weighing on their family life. We have a prayer request <clears throat> again for fair wages and financial breakthrough. Uh, for the co-workers on this caller's job. We have a request uh, for peace and love within a family. Lord, family is the basis and the structure of everything in this world. And we want nothing more than, than abundant love and peace within families. So we put them in your hands and ask that you would guide them that you would touch their minds and their hearts and bring them together, that you would help them to remember the, the love and the support that's necessary within a family in order yes. for them to be successful. We have a prayer request for Angela, who is pursuing her education at the time, at this time. We pray, Lord, that you would be her guide, that you would open up in her mind uh, an understanding of where you want her to be, of what direction you want her to travel, how she can be used even through her education to further the work of your kingdom. We have a prayer request for Yuri, that he would be more respectful with his mother and that he would find ambition to do something good with his life. Lord, touch his mind, trouble his conscience, Help him to understand that relationship is one of the most important things. Relationship is why you created man in the very beginning. Relationship, especially within the family, is so important. Turn him around, bring him back. Help him uh, to integrate himself well within the family and to find respect and love there. We have a request for Carmen, who is starting chemotherapy. Lord, we pray that you would be with her in a marked way as uh, her body is bombarded with these chemo drugs. We pray that you would give her strength to face day by day, to overcome, and to indeed be successful in the end, that her health would be restored, and that she will indeed have a testimony of the goodness of God. We have a request from Lorna that she would be guided as she seeks a job path. We have a request for Tracy, for Michael, for Dennis, and for Errol. Not specific on what they are needing, but Lord, each and every one of us need you in our lives. So we are praying, Lord, that you would be abundantly visible in their lives, that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide them in the path that you have chosen for them that they may indeed glorify and honor your name. We have a, praise re a, a, a prayer request for a coworker 
who was recently diagnosed with stage four cancer and unfortunately is experiencing debilitating pain. Uh, Lord, we pray in a special way that you would touch this individual, that you would give her ease from her pain. We know that she faces a, 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 a troublesome time ahead. But Lord, if she has your strength and support, if she can lean on you and know that you are God and that you care for her, that you love her and that you will walk every step of the way through this with her. As long as she understands that, Lord, we know that she can get through, that she can be healed and that she can be eased from debilitating pain. We have a request <clears throat> for the saving of, of his soul for R.S., and for MS, praying for deliverance and for a saving. We have a prayer request for a full and speedy recovery again for Valdine, who is in the hospital with COVID. We have a prayer request for a person who is asking prayer for their family. We have a request <clears throat> for daughter Lindsay uh, for her schoolwork. Lord, we pray that you would touch her in her mind, touch her brain cells, help her to uh, be able to absorb, to understand, to gain knowledge and wisdom as she studies and help her Lord um, with her behavior. She's a teenager and she's facing those teenage years and those teenage behavior problems. But Lord, we know that if you take her under your wing, you can help guide her along with her family, that she can study successfully, learn successfully, and overcome any obstacles that are in her path. We have a request <clears throat> from someone who is suffering from severe headaches and facial pain. Lord, we're asking that you would intervene, that you would help them to find a remedy, to find relief, to find healing. We have someone asking prayer for a friend who uh, cut herself uh, due to mental issues. Lord, today we are especially praying for mental illnesses and we lift this person up in addition to just a general prayer for mental illness. Lord, that they can, <clears throat> that you would touch their mind, that you would help them to overcome the issues that are, they are dealing with that they can return again to full health. We have a prayer request for children and for a grandson. And we have a prayer request for a daughter whose eyes and her throat and for all of that particular family. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful that we have a God who hears and answers prayer, that we have a God who even hanging on the cross, looked down the future, looked at all of us who would be suffering from some sort of illness or problem as a result of sin. And you, you knew that what you were doing would eventually bring an end to all the suffering, all the pain, all the trouble in this world. Help us to look to that cross, Lord. Help us to remember the cross of Christ. Help us, Lord, that as we look to Christ, as we look to you, Heavenly Father, yes. that all of our burdens indeed will be lifted. That even if we have to go through the crisis, we know that we have someone who is officiating in our lives who have experienced the crisis already, who Great. knows what we're going through and is indeed there every step of the way to guide us, to encourage us, to lift our spirits, even to heal our wounds. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are. We thank you for being in control of all things. We thank you we can trust you, that we know that what you say is truth, 
that what you promise is true. And that our lives have been changed for having been in relationship with you. Let us testify daily to the glory of God. Let our lives show that we have met Jesus. And let us encourage others day by day to know Jesus, to have the opportunity of a relationship with him, and to have the glorious pro promise of a future free from all of this pain, free from all of this fear and anxiety, free from the threat of death, free from everything that yes, sin has brought on this world. Thanking you again, Lord, for who you are. Thanking you for loving us with an everlasting love, for calling us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We thank you, Lord, for being our God. In Jesus' name, we lift our prayers and our thanksgiving and our praise. Amen. 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 Amen, amen and thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Gordon? Amen. Maybe ask you to do our closing prayer? Yes, sure. Gracious Father, we thank you once again for the total sufficiency of Jesus Christ for our lives. We thank you for the gift of intercession ministered to us by Sister Shaw. We pray your covering on her life as she continues to uh, speak for you. Yeah. We pray, Lord, as we continue to launch out and this day as we go out lord we pray that you would continue to walk with us as we walk with you that you would talk to us as we uh, talk to you may you be lord above us to inspire us in front of us to guide us uh, behind us uh, to protect us and should we fall down we thank you lord that you are already underneath us to lift us up and so we go forward, Lord, with the assurance of your love, your care, your protection, and your provision. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We want to thank Pastor Gordon and Sister Shaw for uh, ministering this morning. And if you have been blessed by this morning's program, or if you wish to have a closer walk with Jesus, we'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook page. And of course, share the link with your family and friends. Join us again tomorrow morning when we meet again at six o'clock to hear another word from the Lord and to pray one for the other. May God bless you richly in Jesus' name. And may the Holy Spirit's presence be evident in your life. Amen. Thank you. Walk in victory today. Amen. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing.